All right, so I thought I would post a quick video on doing ball corners. Uh, this is just such a common problem, and there was a discussion about it on the forum this morning, and I'd sort of been thinking about doing an example like this for a while, so I thought, all right, I'll just throw this thing together. So to start with, uh, I'm just doing like a box corner here, and everything is super simple and clean. Let me turn the points on, right? So these are all curvature continuous. So degree five by degree one, right? We're gonna, as always, we do the simple case case first, and then once you master that, you can you know add a little more, a little more complication to this, right? But we're gonna start with something super simple. So you'll notice that, you know, these are all just you know, everything is curvature continuous and everything is the minimum number of points and degree to satisfy the requirements, right? So this is, and, and you'll see why we really, why this pays off in this example a lot. So the problem, of course, like these are all, oop, let me not move that, there we go. So these are all equally sized, right? And so this is, this is kind of, uh, you know, people get backed into this corner and then it's like, well, what do I do here? And like, this is curvature continuous and this is curvature continuous and this is curvature continuous. But, you know, if I just try to fill this in three-sided, like this corner here is not going to be curvature continuous. I guarantee it. So what we want to do, of course, is we want to make this three-sided hole four-sided. And the easiest way that we can do that is to just drag our points. You know, I can do this, and I can do this, and I'm starting to just kind of open this thing up a little bit, right? And, you know, you can see, and I'm going to mirror this over because this surface is this really the same as this surface. Like, this thing's mirrored on the 45 in this case. And so we can see that we're, like, close to something that's planar, but what if we were, like, you know, well, let's make this actually planar. And, and also, you know, what's... What's interesting to note, because in this case, because this is flat, right, we can move these points left and right, and we actually maintain curvature continuity here. It's uh, pretty cool, right? So even though I've just moved this edge, it is still perfectly curvature continuous here, right? So here's a really cool way also that I, uh, let's go back to this, that, that I actually, if I have a little bit of a wobble to this edge, here's a way that I clean them up. I do this all the time. So I make a curve, just a straight line from this end to this end. I extrude it. And then let's say for the sake of argument here, let's make it so that it's not quite touching in some spots, right? So if you have some S curve to this, it's not gonna fully intersect. And so if you wanna clean this edge up, this is another great instance where pull is so useful, right? So I can pull this curve onto here, and then I can run match surf by position. And now I have this perfectly clean, perfectly planar surface edge here. I do that all the time. I do just a curve to the start and the end. I extrude it in a clever, convenient direction. I use pull, I use match surf, and now I have this perfectly crisp edge where I want it to be. Really, really easy, right? So I'm gonna mirror this over here on the 45, there we go. And then I'm gonna do blend curve between this edge and this edge. Right, I'm gonna do it by curvature on both of these. Awesome. And then I'm gonna do surface by edge curves so I can keep this nice and clean and tidy. Right, good. Turn the points on here. Uh, you know, we can see straight away that it's not tangent even, but again, the whole idea is that we create these clean surfaces and then we, and then we set them. So I'm gonna do match surf, multiple matches. Let's get this to this, this to this, this to this, and all of these by curvature and match target isocurve direction. Awesome. Uh, let's actually, I'm gonna use my VSR 
to check this and see what it looks like. Aha. So we still have some G2 issues here. Let's actually sort of do this the slow way, which is don't try to do them all at once. So this one to this one, curvature, match target, boom. This one to this one, boom. Sometimes it works better if you don't do them all at once, is what I have found. Let me look at this real quick, see what I have. All right, so we're G2 discontinuous here. Let's see if we can go back and match these and get it to work. And I can always up the degree, but I'm trying to do this without even doing that, just to see if I can. Awesome. So we are now all the way up to G2 on all three of these, right? Uh, I can even point at this stuff. Like, I don't love the look of, of these ones here, right? These, these verts, to me, look a little bit out of place. And in this case, again, I can just... I can just move these around. Boom. And a little bit here, too. Right, so I should also mention, you know, what's th this whole method. If this surface, you know, let me save it, create a copy of the surface over here. If I rebuild this and I make it look like something that, say, came out of network surf, right? I turn the points on. Look, I don't have the option of moving the edge like I did, right? There's no way that I can point edit this thing. To, to move the edge when it's this kind of density, right? And I took this much farther than I think a lot of, you know, people's surfaces look like, but there's a lot of surfaces that have this kind of point density. And so you can really see, like, if your point density looks like this, you have all this flexibility with it, right? We can move things around. If your point density looks like this, there's not really anything that you can do with it, right? So now, I'm gonna just gonna dupe this, not dupe the border, but dupe the edge right here. Oh, did that not do it? Oh no, I got it. Oh, and I'm gonna split this with this curve. Awesome. And let's just see, it might actually all be curvature already. Yeah, it is, awesome. So this whole thing, let me get rid of this curve right here. Let me join this, let me zebra this. Let's adjust our mesh. Let's go much, much finer than this. Yeah, something like that, cool. Say okay, right, so let me bring these up to a little thicker. There we go. So this kind of ties so many of the concepts together uh, that, that I've been covering in this series. You can see how by keeping your primary surfaces clean, like by, by having not a lot of points on this, the minimum number of points that we need, right? you can see how we open ourselves up to do some really cool stuff. Because otherwise, we would have had to sort of just trim, you know, if we had an overly dense surface, we'd be trimming this, and then that trim would be denser than it needs to be, and so then this ball corner surface would be denser than it needs to be. On and on and on, right? So by paying attention to our surfacing at the beginning, we end up being able to do some really cool stuff with our surfaces and have something that's, you know, just nice and smooth. It's the same, you know, it's the same curvature blend all the way around. We've transformed a three-sided problem into a four-sided problem. We've done it pretty darn quickly, right? And we've sort of done it, you know, what I would say, this is the, I'd say this is the proper way to do it, or a proper way to do it. All right, I hope you enjoyed that.